Hello again everyone and welcome back to my channel. People that know me know that I love Linux, I love IT in general. This industry is a lot of fun to work in, but one thing that's not so much fun is the fact that we have to reboot our servers after installing updates. Now I know some of you might be thinking, you know, just install your patches, sudo reboot, stop complaining, what's the big deal? But actually, in a lot of organizations, it can be very, very challenging to get approval for the maintenance window that's required to facilitate the reboot of a server or the restart of an application. Now, for some of you guys out there, maybe this isn't even a problem. Maybe your organization has some sort of automatic means of installing and deploying patches, maybe even something cool like rolling updates to where you never have to worry about something like this. And if that's you, that's very impressive and that's doing it right. But quite a few organizations actually don't have automatic patching enabled or any automation at all whatsoever. And that can be a real problem, especially considering, you know, some companies can wait over a hundred days to patch their servers. And most security vulnerabilities are actively exploited within 40 days. And that's a real problem. Now, when it all comes down to it, most companies, you know, they want to be on the news not because they're the next Equifax and they're in the process of explaining to all of their customers and clients why their personally identifiable information was leaked all over the internet. You want to be on the news because your company is awesome and doing awesome things. But when it comes to installing patches, if that's all you're doing, I mean, that's the easy part. But like I mentioned earlier, the real challenge comes in getting a maintenance window approved. You might have several stakeholders that have to sign off on it, and, you know, if you're playing the waiting game with hackers, you're definitely going to lose. And investing in security is definitely a great thing to do. But at the end of the day, if we could simply not have to reboot our servers in order to install patches, that alone would actually help a lot of organizations be a lot more timely when it comes to updates. Now, one thing that I find interesting is that according to the Poneman Institute, only about 44% of organizations out there have some sort of automated patching solution in place which means that there's quite a few companies out there that are potentially vulnerable to attack. Now, one of the things that I love most about Kernel Care is the fact that it works on multiple distributions. Now, I haven't personally seen any organization out there that runs just one distribution. Even companies that focus on one standard distro, they usually have that one server that, you know, no one wants to talk about that's running something else for reasons. And we'll not get into that. But, you know, generally speaking, multiple distributions are the norm. And with kernel care, you don't have to pay multiple companies for the privilege of live patching. But again, patching the kernel, that's just one reason for a reboot. And it's a big reason, probably the most common reason for Linux server reboots. But it doesn't patch glibc, OpenSSL, and other applications. But now, actually, with kernel care plus, it actually does patch OpenSSL and glibc, which means it can actually prevent more reboots than standard kernel care. And when I found out about the service, I definitely wanted to check it out. Now, kernel care plus is a brand new offering from kernel care. And technically, it's actually in beta. But as of the time I'm recording this video, it's actually considered production ready for CentOS 7, Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7, as well as Cloud Linux OS 7. So if you are running one of those distros, then you are good to go. You can actually get started today. And other distributions will be joining Kernel Care Plus in the coming weeks. And distributions such as Debian and Ubuntu are going to be among the first that are coming. So I'm definitely looking forward to checking it out. But in this video, what I wanted to do was just go ahead and check it out right now. Look at the process for installing it and show you guys. And off camera, I set up a server and I'm ready to go to go ahead and get it installed. So let's go ahead and dive in. For the purpose of this video, I went ahead and set up a brand new CentOS 7 server to use as a test. So I'll go ahead and SSH into that server right now. And I'm in. When you sign up for Kernel Care Plus, you will receive a trial key that you can use to get started. And also you'll receive some installation instructions as well. I'm going to show the process of installing Kernel Care Plus right now, but keep in mind that this process may change in the future. They might actually simplify this a bit, so just make sure that you are following the instructions in the email that you receive if you sign up. Now first, let's make sure that we have wget installed, so I'll just type which wget. 
and I do not have it installed. Unless you've already installed it, it's not actually default in CentOS. So let's go ahead and get that installed. So I'll just type yum install wget. I'll say yes. I'll just accept all the confirmations here, and we should be good to go. Now we can go ahead and download the package, and the URL may vary, so you want to make sure that you are following the instructions in the email. But I'll paste in the URL that is the case as of the time I'm recording the video, which is this one right here. And then I'll press enter. Now as you can see, we have the kernel care package downloaded right there. We can go ahead and continue. And the installation process will more than likely change. They're going to simplify it a little bit here. So the commands that I'm going to use represent the process as of the time I'm recording this video. But make sure that you check the email that they send you when you sign up because the installation process may be updated by the time you are seeing this video. So here on the screen, I've pasted the command that can be used to set up kernel care. I'll just go ahead and press enter. I'll accept the confirmation there and we should be good to go. So basically what we're doing here is we're creating a variable kcare patch server and we are setting it equal to this URL right here and then we are going to go ahead and install the RPM that we've downloaded so that's pretty simple. Now we should actually have the kernel care package installed on our server. Now that we have the package installed we can go ahead and apply the trial key to the account so I'll paste that command in as well and here it is. So basically you will receive a key when you sign up and I've just gone ahead and added that right here. So effectively we are adding this information here into the system ID file. So I'll just press enter and we'll make sure that it's there and it is. So after you install kernel care, you'll then have access to the kcare ctl command. And that's the command line utility that you can use to interact with kernel care. Now normally you don't really have to do anything because kernel care will actually check in in the background, but the kcare ctl command will give you additional options. And since the server hasn't checked in yet, we can use this command to go ahead and force it to do so. So for that I'll type kcare ctl dash dash update and then enter. And there we go. According to this, it's downloaded updates, it's applied patch level 8, and it even gives us the kernel version that has been patched, which should be the same one that we're running. And as you can see here, it is. Now on my end, I only have a dozen or so servers, so to be fair, I really could just manage those myself, install the updates and reboot, but I really have gotten used to the fact that kernel care is on my servers and eliminates the need for me to reboot them. I think that's really awesome and I hate rebooting servers. So I think that it's definitely a major value for me. And just like anyone else, you know, I don't have any special benefit. I pay $2.95 for kernel care. And I think that's very affordable for the privilege of having live patch. I mean, when you have canonical live patch, for example, you are going to pay more than that and their service only affects Ubuntu and Kernel Care. I can use that on multiple different distributions and they support all the key players. So I really do feel that the Kernel Care service is leaps and bounds better than distro specific services like that offered from Canonical and even OpenSUSE or Red Hat. But when it comes to Kernel Care Plus, I mean, it's still affordable. It's just, you know, $3 more per month per server if you have between one and 500 servers. So. That's just a few more dollars per server to protect against further reboots. And it might be something worth looking into if updates to glibc and OpenSSL account for any particular number of reboots on your servers. I highly recommend you check that out. Now, if you're interested, in the description below, I have a link to an on-demand webinar that you can sign up for that'll give you more information. And then if you sign up for a free trial, then it's just $5.95 per month per server to go ahead and use Kernel Care Plus as soon as the trial runs out. And I definitely recommend you look into it because, you know, when it comes to security, you again, you either want to be on the news for a really good reason, definitely not a bad reason, and you want your company to be known as a company that does security right, and you don't want to put your client's information at risk either. And Kernel Care Plus is a valuable layer of your security onion, so to speak, because the more security layers you have, the better. And it's definitely a great layer to have on your servers.
So what's important to your organization when it comes to security? Do you find yourself rebooting your servers more often than you would like? Do you even reboot them at all? Let me know your thoughts about this or any other security topic in the comments down below this video. And definitely subscribe if you haven't already done so. I have some awesome content coming and I'll see you again soon.